Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Vikas here and today I'm going to discuss a very very interesting topic. We will basically orchestrate a three tire architecture and we will see how we can make connection between those three things. This is one of the most relevant question an interviewer will ask you. Okay, because we do we do the simple deployment, right? We create the pod, we create the database, right? Anybody can teach you, but nobody is gonna teach you how you can make connection between those three pods. So that thing we are going to see today, right? So let, let's just get started with the uh, architecture overview. So here I'm using MySQL as a database, which will be exposed on cluster IP. All right, here I'm using my PHP my admin so that I can access my MySQL database, which is exposed on cluster IP. So we have assigned a cluster IP to the MySQL pod. Then we are trying to access our database using my PHP admin, right? So I will show you how I can make connection between these two pods. This is the second stage and in the third stage, you can see I am using PHP. So the main application is going to be based on PHP. So it, PHP will do what? PHP will interact with the MySQL pod. So this is basically going to be a to-do application. Let me show you uh, the diagram so that it will be more clear to you. Okay. So this is the diagrammatic representation what we are going to achieve, right? So this is, this is going to be a PHP to-do application, right? What are the requirements we have? First is we are using database and second is we are having database management tools. So PHP my admin is a database management tool through which we can manage our database. We can delete, create, we can create more tables, right? Using this. So this is done. And what basically the application do? What is the purpose of the application that we are going to create? So mainly we, we would be able to insert the data in the, into real time, right? We can update the data and after all we can delete the data as well. Right, so these are the things we can see, but our main focus should be how we can deploy and make connection between these three things, right? So step one is going to be, we are going to launch the MySQL pod. We will use kubectl commands to create this MySQL pod, right? Here you can see these are the parameters will be required. The database name we have to define, the username and the password, right? So that we can authenticate with the database so that we can connect. So here I'm going to take the database name as this SQL database. You can take anything, right? And the database user, this is going to be by default as a root only and the root password will be root password itself. I will keep it. You can update it uh, as per your convenience. So these all things I will show you. Then comes your PHP my admin part. Okay, so these are the parameter will be required. And here we are going to link our MySQL with, sorry, PHP admin with the MySQL. So that I will show you. Okay, and once this is done, these are the parameter required. After that, I'm going to link this with MySQL, right? In order to create the MySQL pod, what are all the things required? First is config map, and second is secret, and third is, we, that is a database, right? Remember that. So we will expose it onto uh, using cluster IP service. After that, there is PHP my admin. So PHP admin will also require config map, secret, and node port service because PHP my admin is a database management tool that we can manage the data. So why I'm using config map and secret here? Basically config map, why we are using so that we can store the database name, but to store the credential like username and like the password, we are creating here secrets, right? So that is the best practice. Okay. Apart from that, in the last, we are using node port service to expose my PHP to do application. Correct. So what will be the first prerequisite you will be thinking, right? In order to go ahead right so first we will see how we can create a kubeadm cluster with a single node right you can add multiple node as well based on your convenience but here today i am going to deploy my e kubeadm cluster along with one node so now we are going to create kubeadm cluster with single node right and this is this is also a very very you know very very a uh, hectic thing you will face like uh, installation of kubeadm is not that easy if you are a beginner right so if you are if you are having hands on it will be very easy for you right so for that i would be needing two instances right so let me launch click on launch instances here i will name it as master you can click on ubuntu i am going to use ubuntu 22.04 here i am going to choose the instance type as t3 medium right so my suggestion would be guys at least use t3 medium okay so here you can choose your key pair if you're having but uh, this is not required for us right we are not going to log we are going to log in directly from here and here what i'm going to do i'm going to expose it on all traffic as of now right once this is done i will keep the memory as 30 right and once this is done we can deploy this this was our master node right and once this is done 
okay so i have created earlier also so that is why you can see here let's go for second i am going to create now node server right i am going to choose again one to 20 and here you can choose t3 medium again means i am going to choose t3 medium and here i am going to expose the traffic to all as of now okay so this is done this source type will be anywhere the main thing is this i will keep it 30 gb and once this is done let's just launch the instance right and once both instances are up and running we will perform the next action installing our cube adn thing right so let me log in connect with my master and let's connect with our node all right so this is our master and this is our node all right and this is the notes i have prepared so this is the one i was talking about here first first thing is you have to install docker on both of the node whether it is master or your uh, node right so this one by one we will ex execute these all commands right or let's do one thing i have prepared this as a cell script so i will do what i will execute the complete thing as a cell script so till this point right so what we are doing let me give you a walkthrough of this so basically we are installing the docker okay here we are adding the official gpg key and once that is done we are uh, we are setting up the repository for the docker right once that is done we are here you can see we are installing the sorry docker right so make sure your system is not having these things in installed so i will suggest you to increase it to the latest version of docker maybe you may face issue right once that is done we have to go to this container.t file right and we have to add these two things that is overlay and br net filter okay for networking things and here once that is done what we will do we will run these following command so that it will you know load these two modules once this is done we will create a file kubernetes.conf into this folder so and after that we will go to this file okay into this directory i have created this kubernetes.conf and into that i am adding these three lines so that it will traverse our network through this right without that your networking things is not going to work so make sure you are using that all right so then these are just simple commands okay so let me take the commands and execute it as a cell script so till what you have to take so you have to take till this guys step 10 okay just take it i will put this uh, cell script into my video description all right so let's go to master first be a super user qbdm.sh just paste that thing do the same thing for the second node also qvadium.sh so i have simplified this qvadium installation for you guys for that you will be thankful for me <laughs> all right so now i am going to execute this okay let's wait and watch for some time until this will get installed right So I have kept these all files for your reference into my GitHub repository. So you can see this is my GitHub repository and from where you can find that. So here you can see three tier to do application is there. So you can download this completely. All right. So kubectl set is on hold. Once this is done, let's open our notepad again. Pages and here now it comes for master node. So for that we have installed the kubelet kubeadm and kubectl these three things are required guys right so once this is done what i will do i will i am just going to initiate the kubeadm right so here you can see i have stored the cube version to 1.23 right and here what i am doing here i am doing what i am just taking that value and updating it right i am fetching here so let's run this so just after the cell execution uh, when we have done the cube in it we have got the connection url right so the same url we have ran onto the node right so once you will run onto the node we, we will get the node connected here right you can see so let me run the command again kubectl get all get nodes so we can see our node here right 
so once this is done what is the next task we have we can get started with the flow right so here we are going to create the mysql pod first right so for that what you have to do you have to go to your docker hub search like this mysql docker and this is the official image guys so if you will scroll down you will see the list of all the required variable which we will use so here mainly we will define the database right so here mainly we will define the database and username and password we are not going to store into the config map for that we will create secret so kubectl create config map name of the config map will be db config and here i am going to pass it as a literal equals to so see there are various ways to pass the config map right keep a pair value type so here you can define either uh, your .env file or your .txt file like this but here i am going to pass it directly right so and here what i am going to pass let's check i am going to pass the database name right so what was the database name we have thought of it will be sql db you can keep it anything that is not mandatory so and what will be the database name sql db all right so it's been created now our second task is we have to create the secret so that we can bind the uh, root root is going to be the default uh, username of the mysql database right you can check here itself so what i will do i will just bind the password okay so here you can see mysql root password so for for root root user super account okay we are going to set the password so for that what we have to do we have to create a secret so secret has been created now our third task is to run our config map and the secret is done now we have to create the pod right so for that we are not going to write manifest file we will generate the manifest file and then we will modify right so let's do that kubectl run so what will be the name of the pod mysql mysql pod and what will be the image image is going to be mysql itself right you can check on the docker hub itself so here you can see uh, the name of the image is mysql let's go back and here mysql i have written i'm not going to execute it right i'm just going to take the output so how we can take the output dry run equals to client we will take the output as a yaml file and let's redirect it so, uh, we will redirect it to mysql pod dot hit enter so once you will check this so we got this yaml file right now we have to pass these two value like the db config the db config and the db secret into our manifest file right so let's do that let's edit here we have to write environment from first will be config map reference right what will be the name for this that is db config correct and when another is secret right secret reference from what is the name name is db db secret right so once this is done we will just apply this kubectl apply hyphen f mysql all right so it's created so let's kubectl get all and here you can see our mysql pod is up and running now the thing is we have to expose this pod right so we have to expose this pod as a clustered ip correct so let's do that kubectl expose pod what is the name of the pod mysql pod port i will keep 3306 and target port i will keep 3306 itself and i'm going to name the service as well the name will be hyphen f and name is going to be a uh, mysql svc so once this is done this pod will, will get exposed onto cluster ip so you can see and this is the cluster ip we are we will be using into our my php admin right so that pod we will connect so while creating that pod we will connect this to this cluster ip so that it will create a endpoint right so once mysql pod setup is done we will go for my php admin okay so we will configure our database management tool so for that what we have to do 
we will again create a config map right so let's search for this so that we can take some input so php admin so this is the official docker image let's go to environment variable all right and this is the variable we will use to connect this with the mysql server right so mainly we have to pass the ip cluster ip of the mysql right what we have mysql pod and then what we have to do we have to pass the port as well so these two things we can keep into our config map right so let's go back let's clear now let's start with the php my php admin let's create it kubectl kubectl create config map and then php admin config right and from literal from literal equals to what will be the first value this will be the host right okay but for host you would be needing the ip correct so for that what we have to do it's created sorry kubectl get all and this is the ip this is the host we have to pass so here only itself written the host name of the mysql server correct so let's go do one thing let's delete that kubectl delete cm space this config map because it is improper right once this is done let's try to create it again kubectl create config map name of the config map and then we have to pass the environment variable in form of literal host equals to what will be the host host will be this copy this value and pass it here oh, sorry okay and then we have to pass the port on which our mysql is running so this using this variable you can pass all right so once this is done what is the port on which this is exposed so this is exposed on 3306 and cluster ip is this right so 3306 so our config map for uh, php admin is created so now i am going to create the secret for secret uh, secret for our ph my php admin okay and this is the secret as a generic type and this is the name of the secret and here i am passing the username and the password of the uh, database right or not the database this this is the password and the username for the database management system my php admin so that you can check from here like php user is there php password is there so once we will pass it so it will create our secret now we are going to utilize this config map and secret into our php admin pod right so let's let's have the uh, let's have the yaml file first kubectl run what is the name of the image so this is php my admin right so let's first name the it php admin pod image equals to php my admin dry run equals to client sorry i did fry run dry run equals to client what type of output you want into yaml format right php admin hyphen pod dot yaml enter and once you will do ls you will get so vi to the php admin so this is what we have created so let's get into the php admin pod and here we will assign the config map and the and the secret data right the same we did for our mysql environment from first is config map reference name is php admin config in the same way we have the secret reference right secret reference name is php admin hyphen secret all right let's apply this
so something wrong with the file so actually I have kept this as a uh, smaller case so let me edit it again PHP admin YAML is very sensitive right so once I have changed you can reapply okay so now we can check it kubectl get all so both pods are running right once this is done we will expose this so we have to expose this as a node port service right so so let's expose this kubectl kubectl expose pod this pod what will be the type uh, the type will be node port right so node port and what will be the port port will be 8099 all right and here I'm going to set the target port to 80 and what will be the name of the service the name of the service will be RPHP admin hyphen SVC now let's try either it's been exposed or not we will do alias k equals to k get all kubectl get all so this php admin service has been exposed on this port right so let's try to access it using the browser 3095 this is the IP of the master node and what will be the pod 3095 so once you will hit that you are going to get the page okay now what we have to do you can see right we have created this database so we have created this when when we have created the config map for mysql and that when we have connected this database engine this database page with the mysql pod so it started fetching all that so now what i am going to do i am going to export some data into this sql db right i have already generated so let's go to import first click on sql db go to import and here just to do application and here you can see simple to do sql just select that come here and click on import so now you if you will click on this to do's you will get all the uh, demo data now let's go to go back here so now our task two tasks are done we have created the php admin pod we have created the mysql pod we have attached we have linked the my php admin part to the mysql and now i am going to create this php to do app and here we will see how we can attach this with our database so once this will get attached so whatever random data we were seeing onto the db management tool our php admin that all we can see onto the front end all right so let's get started so for that what you have to do for that you have to go to my this repository and I'm going to clone my application so here let's take the I am on node let me go clear this get clone once clone is done then you have to go to the three tire folder here you can see there is an index.php and this is the file it will show all the data into the front end by fetching through the mysql so we are not going into the in the depth of the coding because that is not our job but what is the thing we have to change that i will show you here you have to provide the uh, cluster ip of your mysql here you have to provide the uh, username of your mysql password of your mysql and the database whatever you have created so once this is done let's see i will show you the docker file as well so this is the docker file so our application is as i told our application will be running on php right php apache so i'm using 8.1 image and here i'm going to 
update all the things update all the packages and here I'm going to install two ex extensions so like PHP extension for installation MySQL and then I'm going to install this so once this is done what is the second thing third thing is you have to copy you have to copy the your index index file your index file whatever you have here right your index.php to this location so now what we have to do we have to first edit our index.php so before that what we have to do kubectl get all we would be needing the ip of the mysql uh, mysql service this just copy this edit our index file index.php file and see instead of running on local it is connecting with the mysql so here we have to pass the local host means our clustered ip of the mysql so here i am going to paste it after that the username will be root only and the password you have to provide what was the password it was root root password right make it correct re-verify it otherwise it is going to it is not going to connect and here we have to provide the database name so what was our database name let's go to okay it is what is the database name it is sqldb sqldb all right let's save it now once this is done we will try to dockerize it so docker file overview i have already given now docker build hyphen t so i will build this image and push it to my docker hub account and that image i will use okay to run a pod all right so docker build hyphen t let's tag it with your docker hub account directly uh, this is my docker hub account and i want to make it as php php web app and mention the version where is the docker file dot enter all right so before building the docker file make sure you are making the changes to your index.ph that latest changes with that latest changes only we are going to dockerize our image so it is going to take some time we can wait we can take a quick break So let's check Docker images, Docker images, and here we can find our web app. So let's try to push this. So for that, you have to log into your Docker Hub account. You can see I have logged into my Docker Hub account. And now what I have to do, I have to push this image for the image, Docker image ls, what we have generated now, Docker image push. And which image you want to push, just take it, copy, paste, all right. So it's been pushed to my Docker Hub account. So once this is done, what is our next next task? We have to create the uh, we have to create the MySQL PHP application. So we will be exposing this PHP application as a node port service. Okay, so let's do that. Let me clear the screen. kubectl run pod and what is the pod name? PHP PHP app and what is the image you want to use? Let me check docker image ls. Let's use the command. All right. And what was the image name? So I'm going to use the image name as this. Copy this image name and paste it here. So it's created my PHP. Uh, it has pulled this image from the Docker Hub and it has created. Now our task is to expose this. Let's check first kubectl get all okay so here we can see this P, uh, php app is up and ready. we need to in order to access that we have to expose it to that kubectl expose pod what is the name of the pod php php app. and uh, the type is going to be node port either you can use load balancer as well that is not an issue okay and uh, after that you have to define the port port equals to 8088 and the target port is going to be going to be 80 and here you, after that you have to define the name of the service equals to php app svc hit enter 
so it's been exposed so now when you will hit kubectl get all so our service is here php app service so now let's try to access our application our to-do application for that you need to take this ip and what is the port node port exposed that is 30856 30856 so here we go our application is up and running so here what are the thing we can do so first thing we can enter welcome to to do's insert how you can verify this if you will you should get it here so you can refresh this so see welcome to mr devops what else you can do you can delete anything this is very bad you have deleted delete it what else you can do you can update it okay we can mark it as completed so you can see this is completing the task see, once you will click on this you have to uh, i will go to patna and then you have to submit it right so it will update so again next time you want to update you have to click on this i will go to pune so you have to submit so these all changes are getting reflected into the database as well so how you can check that if you will refresh your database management system you can see i will go to pune and i will go to and let's delete all the records delete this delete this and let's keep this right because you all are learning okay so hope you have enjoyed this video a lot just if you're facing any kind of difficulties just drop your comments i will i will try to i will try my best to reply all of you all right so hope you have a great learning thanks thanks for watching